is a reason why they call him the Dark Knight. Everything about him is dark, his bat suit, his city, and his storylines. Although they claimed that the show would be for kids, it is more than apparent that some moments in Batman the Animated Series are not suitable for children. This isn't some silly storybook! Buckle up, because things are about to get dark. Before we dive too deep into the darkness, you should definitely hit those subscribe and notification buttons. You'll be the first to know when we upload new and exciting content. Go on, it's fun. Annie, don't! Clayface. In the episode titled Growing Pains, we meet a young girl who seemingly has amnesia and is on the run from a man. Robin takes it upon himself to help her out, and he even names her Annie. Annie is actually part of a villain named Clayface, who separated part of himself to create Annie. He had no idea that she would be developing her own consciousness and become her own person, which makes her fate that much more tragic. Clayface has Robin in his clutches, and in order to save Robin, Annie slams herself into Clayface, merging with him once once again and losing herself forever. That's Mr. Freeze to you. Ice to meet you. Mr. Freeze, originally named Mr. Zero, made his comic book debut appearance in Batman 121 way back in 1959. Fast forward to 1992, mix in that dark DC magic and you have yourself a backstory worthy of a Batman villain. Victor Freeze is a cryogenic scientist working at Goth Corp. When his wife Nora falls deathly ill, he puts her in a suspended animation to keep her alive. Before he can find a cure, the CEO of the company decides to shut down the cryogenics research, which would mean the end of Nora. He fights the CEO, but he comes into contact with dangerous chemicals, forcing him to live forever in a Sub-Zero suit without his beloved wife. I've made a hobby of studying your chilly history, Victor Freeze. Frozen Alive The glamorous life of Mr. Freeze caught the attention of one Grant Walker, owner of the water-themed utopia called Oceana. In his quest to live forever as a popsicle, he captures Mr. Freeze and uses his frozen wife Nora to blackmail him into creating a Sub-Zero suit of his own and plans to freeze the Earth. Batman convinces Mr. Freeze that Nora wouldn't be too happy about him letting Grant kill billions of people, so Victor turns his ice gun on Grant. As Oceana explodes, Grant is shown alive and well trapped inside his coffin of ice, sinking to the bottom of the ocean where he'll remain for all of eternity. Psst, Jervis! Oh, uh... Alice. Mad World. Jervis Tetch loves the classic tale of Alice in Wonderland. He also has a big crush on his co-worker named Alice. So what does he do to charm the woman he loves? He adopts the Mad Hatter persona and uses mind control on the people of Gotham to impress her. Obviously that doesn't work, so he decides that if he can't have the real her, he'll settle for the brain-dead version and puts her under mind control too. To make this episode even darker, Paul Dini revealed that it is actually inspired by real events. There was a technical designer with feelings for someone who didn't love him back, which drove him mad enough to do a shooting at his workplace. The police emergency van just switched on. Dark Knight the Mad as a Hatter episode isn't the only time that writer Paul Dini was inspired by real-life stories. In fact, in 2016, he released a graphic novel called Dark Knight, a true Batman story, about a terrible assault that he was involved in. The attack happened in 1993, while he was working on Batman the Animated Series, and it nearly ended his life. Having gone through such a traumatic experience, he wasn't sure if he could continue to write about crimes and violence anymore. Dini pulled through, though, and used the incident as inspiration for episodes of the show, and of course, his 2016 graphic novel. He even won an Emmy in 1993 for outstanding writing in an animated program. Not this time, Alfred. Maybe not ever again. The Flying Graysons. Robin's Reckoning Part 1 is another Emmy winner for the series that tells the tale of Robin's origin story. Dick Grayson and his parents are trapeze artists, and during a live performance, the unthinkable happens. Dick notices the rope they're using begins to break, but before he can warn his parents, it snaps, and all he can do is hopelessly watch as they fall to their deaths. Having gone through the same thing, Bruce knew exactly what to do. He takes in the orphaned Grayson, throws a suit on him, and turns him into a superhero! He can't take Zuko away from me. I won't let him! Robin's Revenge Robin's story becomes even darker when Batman finds out that the death of Robin's parents wasn't an accident. A man by the name of Tony Zuko is responsible for sabotaging the rope, and Batman decides it is best to keep this a secret from Robin. Of course, Robin eventually finds out, and hunts down Zuko himself. Soon enough, Robin finds and confronts Zuko, and blinded by rage, he fights him and then holds him over the edge of a pier. Before Robin has a chance to let go and allow him to fall to his death, Batman is able to talk some sense into him, and he lets Zuko 
Zuko live? It's crazy to think that the boy Wonder was seconds away from committing murder. This is Hardak. Bat Robot. Hardak, or H-A-R-D-A-C, is an AI that creates duplicates of everyone in Gotham, including Batman. The two Batman throw down and the fight is dead even, until the duplicate accidentally hits Batman off a cliff. Believing that he's taken a life, he becomes stricken with anger and grief, and the process ends his own life in order to prevent any more innocent people from dying. Batman, having faked his death, ascends from the cliff and finds the remains of his robotic counterpart. Batman wonders with Alfred if the robot actually had a soul, and since he was an exact mental copy of Batman, is that how Batman would react if he killed someone? A weary body can be dealt with, but a weary spirit, that's something else. Despair. I Am The Knight is an episode that perfectly captures the idea of Batman the Animated Series. It shows that superheroes in cartoons aren't just for kids, and that they can have some real substance behind them. In this episode, Batman questions if Gotham would be better off without him. To make things worse, he shows up late to a police raid, and Commissioner Gordon ends up getting shot. Batman breaks down, destroying everything around him in a fit of rage. It gets so bad that he seriously considers hanging up his cape for good. He does eventually snap out of it, but Gotham was dangerous close to losing its protector. I feel as if I'm someone else. Inception. In the episode, Perchance to Dream, Bruce Wayne finds himself in a reality where he is not the Batman. His parents are alive and he's living a happy life in Gotham. He realizes he's stuck in a dream world, and he has to decide if he wants to stay and live a happy but fake life, or go back to reality and live in a tragic but real world. Eventually, he fights the dream world Batman, a symbol of his desire to stay in the fantasy, but in the end, he knows he can't stay. There's only one way to wake up, and Bruce is forced to leave his perfect life by jumping off a building and committing suicide. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. DC may get a lot of grief for being dark, but Marvel can't match the lasting impact the DC material can leave with you. So what do you think? Were there any Batman animated series moments that scarred you as a child? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching another Screen Rant video, and be sure to like and subscribe for even more.